guys, uh, this is Tony with an intro to Ethereum programming, specifically Ethereum Solidity. So Solidity is a programming language that Ethereum is based off of, and in February of 2021, if you've been paying attention, uh, Ethereum has become very profitable, or the price has gone way up. Um, in just, let's say, right now that's October of 2020, so that's about four months, it went from to 50 to 1940 so I don't know roughly four or six times as much um, so yeah and blockchain has been pretty hyped up over the last few years like there's been that spike in 2018 um, so there's been a lot of incentive to know more about Ethereum and just getting on the money a lot of people are doing investing um, this will just be an overview of some resources you can use to learn Ethereum programming It won't be going too deep into uh, user tools or like teaching um, too deep into any one of them. Um, but these are some quick start tools and links to help you get started. Because um, learning Ethereum can be kind of um, daunting, especially since it's a little different from other programming languages. How you have to pay money in order to be able to um, use your code. So it's not as friendly as like Java or something where you can just, you know, even if you are very inefficiently coding, you're still not really spending any money. So here it is. First thing I have here are the Solidity docs. Um, it looks like your basic programming language doc. Um, on the left here, there's the language description, which is basically just all the things like types and just how to write the code. Um, and under that, it's just like if you really don't understand what's happening, the internals of um, how Solidity works. Um, so that's this link, and I will be providing all the links that uh, I use in this video in the description. So, um, yeah, you can just reference those after watching the video. Okay, next is something that you'll see commonly or hear about commonly when you start searching about Solidity or theory programming is this remix editor. Um, so, for most programmers, use a certain IDE. Um, so for example, Java is IntelliJ um, or C Sharp if I use Visual Studio Code or something, uh, or Visual Studio. So, this is the default um, if you don't want to download the compiler of Solidity um, locally. You can use this. A lot of people, I've heard this is kind of popular. Um, honestly, I don't really like using it as much, but out of the box, you can, this is a nice quick start. Um, you get these three files. Um, and the nice thing about it is that um, I think as long as you don't clear your cache or anything, um, the file that you do create will be saved between each session. Um, so you don't have to worry about like downloading your files and uploading them each time. It'll just still be there. Um, so here is where you can like create and edit files. Um, here is where you can compile it. So by default, you get the storage file and you set the compiler because Solidity has actually been updating quite frequently and it is a lot of changes be between each version so even in a few like in a few months or a few years even if I were to like go over the programming language um, for version 8 which is the latest you would probably have a bunch of changes from like version 6 and 5 and there are a bunch of old tutorials out there which just don't work anymore because of this um, so Solidity handles this through this um, Compiler bounding, so this is between seven and eight. Um, but yeah, you can set the compiler. You can like press compile, um, and then if you don't see any errors here, then you can start publishing. Um, and here you can like deploy it locally. And then when you deploy it, you can start using some of the methods um, or start using it. So the store function is part of this contract which is sort of like a class in Java for those of you who are in Java you can use it um, and after that there are some plugins here that you kind of want to activate by default like I have this debugger compiler analysis unit testing and that just opens up these other tabs around here so um, this is some analysis static analysis to help you code better this is for debugging um, this is for unit testing um, I don't really actually know what this is. There's also the settings. So that's um, Remix. Um, it's not always obvious how to use it, 
and that's why I have this link for how for the docs of the IDE itself. So you can go you can just go do this and learn more about it. Okay, next I want to just link this page. This is kind of old. It was roughly three years ago, um, and but it a lot of these are just jet generics or the like basics of how Ethereum works and the history behind it. So even though Solidity has changed a lot over the last few months or years, um, this is a little more timeless. So for someone just starting out and needs to understand how this all works, this is a good intro to like how blockchain or Ethereum works. Um, so I would say it's a good read. Um, it's also part of this Truffle website, which I'm going to go over next. Um, so this Truffle seems to be a nice tool um, used for testing um, Solidity. And I like it because you can kind of use it out of the box. Um, and by that I mean you can test to see if like your code actually compiles locally very quickly. Um, by using these shuffle boxes. So shuffle has these boxes that are like tutorials um, that if you do shuffle unbox, it will create a project for you. And I tried this um, tutorial myself and it seems to have worked locally. Um, I think I tried it about a month ago. Um, so it's very nice. And the reason why I like this is because in Remix, when I use a debugger, um, so usually when you debug, you're used to debugging like line by line. So like if I put a breakpoint um, on line like 26, like it'll just stop there. But when you debug in Remix, it doesn't do that. Remix is actually at the assembly code level, uh, which is a lot more stuff. So it's, it's a lot harder to control. Um, you also have to know way more what you're doing. But for me, it, it was just a lot more annoying to test and run my code. Um, so I really liked the idea of having a unit test that could test my code. And um, it would just make it that I wouldn't have to go through the assembly level. Um, okay, so that's that. And one other thing that um, Truffle on the Truffle website is this Gantt test. This is Gantt tool, which is an Ethereum client. Um, basically, in order to use a contract, you have to um, connect to a client. And some people starting out, they might have their own Ethereum accounts and start like connecting directly to that but it's pretty dangerous to develop in Solidity with a real account starting off because um, calls do cost money. So especially with the price of Ethereum nowadays, that's gonna be quite expensive. Um, but what this does is create this dummy client and you can see how there's some addresses. So that's what I meant by you have to connect to the Ethereum client. You have to like um, connect to certain addresses when you program in Ethereum. These have balances. So you can just test a lot for free. It's a lot easier here. Um, so I would recommend, highly recommend using Ganch for your test lines. Uh, so that's it for an overview. Hope that helps. Um, if you have any questions, post them in the link below. And have a great day. Bye.